Good morning. Um, good morning to you guys here online and those that will watch this back later. I um, pray that everyone has had a good week so far and that you are, if you're a father, you're looking forward to a great Father's Day. But I know each of us have a father who might be here uh, still with us. Um, and and some may have passed on into heaven. So uh, I pray that uh, you can celebrate uh, that either way as well on Father's Day. Um, <clears throat> this week we're gonna we're gonna dive into the second part of Ephesians chapter one. Um, this is a, a prayer and a thanksgiving and. Um, so just a lot of good good things to keep in mind um but um we'll see where the holy spirit takes us this morning uh apologize for not being able to or not i should say not putting the questions in the the new app because i being an ambassador i uh downloaded or updated the app as soon as it was available i don't haven't been able to find a way to get back to the old app <laughs> and I couldn't post anything like I used to and I was fr frustrated with that a little bit so I um I unfortunately I didn't post just even the words of the questions so we'll be going through the questions without you guys having uh, seen them this morning but I pray that that will work out just as the Holy Spirit wants it to and I know it will so uh, if anybody would like to pray us in, I would appreciate that. And we'll... I'll pray us in. Gracious and heavenly Father, we pause to acknowledge that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, there's nothing that happens in our lives, good or bad, that escapes the sovereign control of your hands. And Father, we're thankful that we can, through this um, marvelous technology that from around the country and sometimes around the globe, that these men can gather together uh, for the encouragement of your word and of the saints. We pray, Father, that our time would be profitable this morning, that we would be attentive to what you're trying to speak to us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, uh, as I came to you guys last week from Long Island, and look, we were looking, uh, I don't know if I guess it was the Hudson River. I'm not sure what body of water it was. I couldn't, didn't, didn't really bother to figure it out. I just like it in looking over the water personally. But um, yeah, it was a glorious weekend. Um, the Belmont Stakes was in town, so it took me like two hours to get from get the 30 minutes from where I was when I was talking to you guys to the to the venue where the conference was, but um, all's good. I got to see other parts of, uh, of of New York and Long Island that I hadn't seen. So <laughs> as my, G, as my uh, GPS tried to maneuver me around some of the accidents that were going on and the Belmont Stakes traffic that had already started uh, when we got off. So um but all good and um this week and and i got to go to upstate new york this weekend also uh to a clergy um uh, or actually a seminary reunion so there were like 300 clergy there we got to talk to put up a pk booth and talk to a lot of pastors about uh pk is back i would say 80 percent of them that came by were women uh female pastors that wanted a men's group in their church goodness gracious hmm. wouldn't that be awesome so um a lot of good conversations with them learned learned some things and one of the things that i learned kind of ties into our um our passage for this week is since the passage is a, a thanksgiving and a prayer um but <clears throat> One of the, the last talk I went to, uh, I got to go to the talks as well as stand at the booth. But um, so that was a blessing in many ways. I got to listen to the, some of the recent, most recent uh, George Barner research and uh, the 
generate well all the generations the busters the boomers the gen x slash millennials uh, y and z and even i don't know the, what the what the term is before they just called them 13 to 15 year olds or something like that so um but one of the last uh the last session that i got to go to was on lament and uh so i don't know where that'll take us today or if it will or we'll, we'll maybe discuss that some other time but he used uh two of david's psalms when psalm uh I, i'm sorry i don't remember the, the numbers i think it might have been 35 and 72 or 32 and 75 but anyway in one david is lamenting because uh which um is a is a biblical term i guess for uh being sort of in the valley right being down in the dumps and uh maybe uh i think at the time at that point uh saul was chasing him and so he was wondering why god was having him um you know pursued uh expecting uh you know somebody's after him to kill him uh, and then uh, the other psalm was about Thanksgiving, like this is. But uh, it, the important part of, of the, the discussion was is that we need both. And the church tends to uh, do a lot of Thanksgiving, even in the, the prayer um, acrostic, uh, A-C-T-S, Acts, or Adore, Confess, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Uh, there's not a maybe in the supplications where you would lament but um you know we don't uh reach out to god and and uh just give him our hard times maybe as much as our at least in church um you know usually in church we're singing praise songs instead of songs of lament um i think in most churches anyway so anyway uh, he was preaching to uh, a group of, of uh, students and pastors and alumni. So uh, I trust he, I thought it was a good point. So with that, um, I'll get us into our study. Sorry for that aside. I think it took too long. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> in, so this week we're going to, Talk about Ephesians chapter one, uh, verses fifteen through twenty-three. So, if somebody would be ready to to read that um, as I read this introduction, appreciate that. Not too long, just uh, um, a lot of good things to think about. So often, we as as individuals and we the church forget the supply. <clears throat> sorry, the supply line of our life. In fact. We're guilty of attempting to provide the power to live this Christian life from within ourselves, but not so with Paul. Paul's life and ministry were saturated with prayer. In fact, all of Ephesians 1 is prayer. Paul is addressing God while thinking about the Ephesians. We've already looked at the great benediction in which uh, he blesses God to having blessed us in Christ. Uh, now, we'll consider the intercession that Paul makes for the Ephesians. It is vital that we not only maintain a high level of prayer in order to enjoy a healthy Christian life, but also that we preserve a balance of praise and prayer as Paul models. Um, so, yeah, Paul didn't didn't seem to bring David into it too much, I guess. So think about this. In what ways do you struggle to maintain a consistent life of prayer and praise? First of all, do any of you struggle with that? Mm. Mm. I, I hear I hear and see a couple of head nods. Um, How many of you are lying if you said no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, being I, I retired, have I have a lot of time that I'm in prayer and, and praise, uh, and and I've got a schedule. I've got them scheduled in my in my uh, in my calendar. 
or corporate prayer. But yeah, that individual prayer is a little harder. Um, but yeah. I, I would like to split those into two because I think I struggle more with personal times of praise than prayer. Um, not that I've got either one figured out, but um, I, I'll, I'll focus on prayer, I guess. Well, sure. If I had to, if I had to come up with, you know, excuses and that's what they are. If I had to come up with excuses for why I struggle with prayer, personal prayer, um, Either I'm too tired and I fall asleep or my mind is too cluttered and I can't concentrate on what I'm praying on. Although my wife tells me, well, those are the things you obviously should be praying about then. Um, she's a wise woman when it comes to prayer. Um, yeah, but, you know, I think probably if I'm honest, there's probably a degree like I go either A, yeah, I don't need to pray about this. I got this figured out. Or B, I don't know what difference it's going to make anyway. Um, it's like, you know, I'm cool with praying for cancer, people with cancer or decisions people need to make, but then there's a whole other, this much stuff in life where I think my tendency is, no, nah, no, nah, I, I got this. I don't need any help with this. I'll, I'll get this figured out. So. I think my struggle with it is, in, uh, you know, because Kim and I do pray together every day. And I think my struggle with it is a lot of times um, saying the same things over and over and over again. And, 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 and not because not like uh, not like praying for something fervently over and over and over again. It's just like those, I guess they call them vain repetition. Um, uh, you know, thank you for bringing back, bringing us back to our comfortable bed and you know, keeping us safe today. I, I do thank him for those things every day. And, and sometimes in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot more that I should be talking to God about. And I don't, um, as far as my prayer life and walking through the day, I talk to God all day long. Um, and, and Chris, I agree with you that, uh, I think my praise balance sometimes is a little off. I think I should have more praise time for him. Um, but yeah, just to, to search deeper in my heart, maybe to ask the Holy Spirit, to pray to the Holy Spirit before I start to pray to, <laughs> to help me uh, really see the things that I need to be talking to him about. I often pray, move me out of the way, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Fill me so it's you, God, instead of me. Well, uh, if somebody's ready, let's read uh, Ephesians 1. Or unless, if somebody else wants to share, please share. Um, interrupt but if somebody's ready to read ephesians 1 15 through 23 the rest of the chapter there i've and, read for the this, last couple of weeks i'm going to give somebody else a chance <laughs> okay and, and as we read maybe uh think about how you describe the tone of the, the verses here yeah, I'll read it for us. <clears throat> Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thank you, Brother Carl. Let's thank God for his word and Paul for being yes. diligent to hear from the Holy Spirit and write such beautiful things as like we talked about last week, a, sort of a poem of blessings. And this week, uh, Thanksgiving and, and prayer. But, um, 
Is there a tone that you heard in those verses? Yeah, well, I heard a tone in my heart about a couple of the verses that I read there, and I, and I believe that maybe Paul has the same thing <clears throat> in, in a certain way. Um, although the person I'm thinking about it is a it is my daughter, and um, this is a prayer of intercession, basically. And uh, so verses 17 and 18. Um, just prayers for her that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to her the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, and that her eyes of his understanding be enlightened, that she may know what is the hope of his calling. Um, that, that's one prayer that I do pray over and over is for, for her salvation and turning her life over to Christ. Um, so the tone I hear from Paul is, you know, I, I hear um, of, of your faith. And, and so I think he's there's an excitement there that he hears of these people's faith. Uh, and he wants to um, pray an intercession for them just to, to help them to realize the fullness of, of God's sovereignty and, and what he can do for them. Well, I certainly agree with all that. Um, and yes, I, you know, a lot of it is intercession for the, for the, the Ephesians, which gives us a model, right, to for interceding for one another. Which uh, we we've, we've done over the few years we've been together. Um, and what do you think motivates Paul to pray for the Ephesians at all? Maybe because of where he used to be and what he knew happened in his life. Being converted from being a Christian killer to a, mm. to a Christ follower. To a killer Christian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good one, Chris. It's too early, it's too early for me to think. <laughs> Well, if I remember, this letter was was written. Um, he'd already visited the Ephesians, uh, and if you think about this um, this chapter or this letter to the Ephesians, um, it was meant as maybe a letter to the broader church. But he spent most of his time, I understand. Uh, his ministry time in Ephesus. So um, he had a special, um, they were a special place in his heart, I guess, and he had a special place. I don't know if it was a, um, if it was that's right or not, but uh, it well, seems uh, that. Uh, I was going to say, it's a, to a little deeper dive on it there. Uh, if Going back to some of the older manuscripts, the term to the church in Ephesus that it is not in there. It basically where it first says uh, to the saints who are in Ephesus and Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Um, the older manuscripts do not have that in there. Um, and if you like um, in verse 15, it says, therefore, I also after I heard of your faith. So to me, it sounds like he's talking to people other than the ones that maybe he had been associated with in Ephesus. Maybe, like you said, something outside of the church that he was uh, accustomed to there. So it's like maybe he got word from, you know, Ephesus that, hey, there's there's this whole other group of people out there. Um, and, and, and maybe this was him writing to them. Some say it might have even travel. been to the Laodicea, Laodiceans. Yeah, he did travel to a lot of other places. And, um, it was, uh, yeah. Ephesus being where he spent a lot of a lot of his time, probably more than any of those other locations, and a special place in the heart, I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, he wasn't with them. Uh, I think that might have been a motivator as well. Uh, 
it, part of it's an encouragement to them, right? And it also, um, and in, in interceding for them. Um, so let's, um, what are the requests that he makes for them in this prayer? Well, I'll read a little bit here. Despite this, despite his unceasing gratitude to God for the Ephesians, Paul still is not satisfied with them. So what is his request? It is not that they may receive a second blessing, but rather that they may appreciate the fullest possible extent the ex implications of the blessings they have already received. So the essence of his prayer for them in verse 18, it says that you may know. We must not look over, we must not look over this emphasis. Growth in knowledge is indispensable to growth in holiness. The knowledge for which Paul prays adds the knowledge of experience to the knowledge of understanding. More than this, it emphasizes, as in verse 17, that you may know him better. That is, come to know truths about him there's no higher, sorry, there's no higher knowledge than the knowledge of God himself. So if you go back and look in, in the passage, do you see those requests? He makes for Ephesus in his prayer. I'll talk, I'll talk a little more about those. But. Yeah, in, in 18 and 19 and those verses there in the middle part of the body, um, just where you started, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And then it goes on. What are the riches of his glory, his, his inheritance? What's the greatness of his power? It's basically like, come on, I, th I hear you have faith, but I don't know that you really understand the magnitude of what God can do for you. Mm -hmm. For you and what he can do through you, too. Uh, you being you, the church, right? Yes. Uh, his church. Uh, why would, in verse 17, spirit of wisdom and revelation, uh, why would that help the Ephesians to know God better? I'll read uh, verse 17 again. So I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. He's saying just continue to accept the Holy Spirit, right? God's spirit. Because it seems it does bring wisdom. If you need answers to questions, uh, they're either in his word, which they didn't have at this time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they probably had some old scroll. They may have had old scrolls, you know, scrolls of the Old Testament. I mean. um, but I don't know that those weren't lost already by this time. I don't recall that time. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to know God? Hopefully everybody can chime in on this one. A lot of people, I just say a lot of people know God in their mind, intellectually, or academically. Um, and it's, I think maybe only when you're touched by the Holy Spirit that that last 18 inches from your head to your heart really sinks in. And I think, I think you guys, it's sunk in already. Um, I, I believe that. I don't live with you all the time. You don't live with me. So I can tell you sometimes I, um, I just 
uh, seem to expel the Holy Spirit from my my actions and my words um, because James takes over. Uh, James you know, and tries to do things his way, but to know God is to love Him, right? We're, we're, I'll shut up. And, what does it mean to you personally to know God? Well, I think first it's there, there's this thing is a, to know God or to know of God because a lot of people know of God, right? And um, it's a whole different level when you start talking about knowing um, <clears throat> how deep is your relationship. I can say I know James and I know Chris and Rick and Tim because I go to a Zoom Bible study with them, uh, but I've never met you guys personally. I've, I've never physically seen you. I, I believe that you are real people, right? Uh, <laughs> and not just avatars. Um, <laughs> so, so there's a level of knowing there, but there would also be a level of knowing if we were sitting in a coffee shop this morning and, you know, discussing our same Bible study, there's, there's even a deeper level of knowledge there. So knowing God in the way that Paul wants them to know God here is, is that type of relationship. Hey, Lee, there you go, Chris. I love this. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Being able to sit down with God and speak to him and him speak to you. Um, it's a, it's a personal relationship. So to me, knowing God is, is having God do what he's supposed to do, be all around me all the time, be living inside me, um, guiding me, comforting me. Uh, to me, that's knowing God. Just to, just to add on to your point, Carl, like relationship with God, it's custom cut <laughs> for everyone. Yes. It's individual. You know, the thing I find in scripture that's so amazing, you know, in one sense, you know, God, Alpha, Omega, beginning, and creator of the universe, and on the other, the very hairs of our head are all numbered. So trying to get our minds around, you know, the magnitude of God is, is one thing in itself. And even with that, God is mystery. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, I've heard that so many times. Like, it's just, you know, faith, trust, hope, life. <laughs> yes. um, he's, he's inside and above and beyond all at once. Like, I, it's hard to even put into language at times. Just sharing. Amen. It brings about, I listened to the sermon this week. Um, it was talking about the majesty and the power and the omnipotence and omnipresence and just everything that God is. And and they use the, the snowflake scenario where if you actually, you know, look at a snowflake under a microscope, how beautiful the crystalline structure is and that each and every one of those little snowflakes is completely uh, different from the next. Uh, but then we get snowstorms that can blanket much of the United States. And to think that that blanket of snow that's covering much of the United States is made up of those little tiny individual crystals and that God knows and has designed each and every one of them. Um, it's mind boggling to think about the detail of God's creations. Yes, it is. So, um, this this uh, sentence in, in the, the um, words that I read to us about the knowledge for which Paul prays adds the knowledge of experience to the knowledge of understanding. So there's a lot of people with knowledge of God in church or maybe in your neighborhood or wherever, but 
in my heart, until they've experienced God, that's a whole different level of knowledge and um, brings out a whole new reason for dedicating dedication of our lives uh, to to God. Uh, when when you experience something that only He can pull you through, and you realize uh, His miracles, right? Uh, and the fact that He's doing yeah. miracles all around us all day long. Uh, that just that just blows my mind as far as understanding, but the experience makes life awesome. Well, in so in biblical usage, the heart is the whole inward self, comprising the mind as well as emotion. What do you think it means to have the eyes of your heart enlightened, as in verse 18? Back in verse 18. So verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. I think the eyes of the heart is probably um, like an opposite of our physical eyes. Our physical eyes see the physical world. The eyes of our heart are going to see, see the spiritual world, the spiritual truth, the things that are invisible. And so they didn't know what to call that. So, uh, you know, I would say um, graphically, it's, you know, not these eyes. Kind of like Jesus saying you uh, you had to be born a second time. And Nicodemus is like, what? Crawl back up into my mom and be born again? And he's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's a different birth. Yeah, a whole different kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think when you say... Um, when you say to be able to see the spiritual world or realm, um, I, I hope in people's hearts it starts with the Holy Spirit, but I think in so many hearts it does not. It starts with the evil spirit around them, and they have to deal with that, and they don't know how to deal with that um, because they can't. And quite frankly, it's very limited, very, very, um, small limit to what uh, we can deal with ourselves in this whole world uh, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion um you know i love i love this i, I want to say this i love the song if you guys have heard it open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart to me that mm -hmm. just like it's just like the the the, the flame um and, and when i first sort of dug into that song with one of our previous pastors. Um, he liked, always liked to have a candle on the table when we were having a meeting. And to him, that represented the Holy Spirit in the room, right? Filling the room with the heat, the light, all that, right? Um, anyway, I love that song, but I have to, I, I want to also tell a story here where um things things were things may have gotten a little heated here after my mountain high experiences over the weekend uh, that went through monday it was a great time and i i drove through the mountains of upper new york uh, uh by the way i got to go to new york city and i think i told you guys that and then went to uh rochester which is upstate new york um and sort of stopped in between to meet another pastor from Project 200. But, um, you know, as I was coming back, and it wasn't quite dark yet. And even when it was dark, uh, there was enough light by the moon that you, know, you could just see the mountains. And, and on the way home, there were two, uh, two calls that I did that Monday night, uh, one from Project 200, a prayer call, and the other, uh, what we call a class meeting with my uh, United Methodist 
um, in, of people across the Northeast. And in both of those, we were talking about um, moving mountains, as, Mark, as in Mark 11 and uh, Psalm 125, verse 1 and 2. Um, but I, and I read all of Mark 11, and really the moving the mountains part is just about four verses. I think, I think it's 21 through 25 or 22 through 25. But that God gives us this is the power, right? We're talking in this, this Ephesian scripture about the power of uh, uh, moving mountains. And that if you if you have the Holy Spirit in you, and your will, his will is to ask to for that mountain to fall into the sea, it will. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and a lot of times we liken the obstacles in our in our uh, path to mountains you know, some we need to climb we need the holy spirit some we need to go around well we need the endurance to, to the holy spirit and some we need to move which physically doesn't seem possible but in the spiritual realm uh, and I, I believe god can move mountains he does move mountains right he, he shakes the earth and he moves mountains. He, um, yeah, so so this week I got home and um, had a first great day home and then the second day home, I really don't know what happened. I, I journaled about three pages on it um, yesterday um, because I was just trying to catch up and, and have it all go through my mind as best as I could my wife and I yesterday had the opportunity to sit down and, and talk. And one of the points that came up was um, on Thursday afternoon, I have a about an hour and a half call with what we call prayer advocates. They're advocates from across the Northeast, Northeastern states. Um, and they're, so, you know, they, their job is really to make sure that we pray in, in before, during, and after meetings that uh, as appropriate. and. Uh, always have prayer as our first priority and always looking for prayer warriors to kind of join the team to be these uh, intercessors right for others is um, you know, one of the one of the, the, the smaller groups uh, here in the Baltimore Washington area that I've prayed with uh, in the past and I still know they're they're still praying at 6 a.m every morning uh, I don't Join them at 6 a.m. every morning because I'm not willing to give up that that time for other things. So, but he says this prayer stuff works. This prayer stuff works, and you know, and they just they see you know when when you actually look at it and you journal it and you ask for prayer, you know, God answers prayer, uh, which He will answer sometime, and sometimes that answer is wait, and but He will answer it in his time, um, just the, the miracles and the wonders that happen. But anyway, so I'm in this hour and a half um, prayer advocate hall. Um, about an hour into it, I'm going, man, are we ever going to pray? Because <laughs> we've been talking about men's health. We've been talking about this and that and other things, but we just really hadn't prayed except for the prayer in the beginning. Uh, and one of my favorite parts of that whole time together is praying for issues in the world that that only God can affect. And so I was given um, the prayer of um, you know, praying for a blessing over the fathers who are in prison. Um, I was 21 years old before I knew that my father spent some time in prison or jail, or whatever it was. Um, and I think he did, and he may not have ever, uh, because I really don't know all the facts of the story, but I, I know he also went into the military right after that. So he could have gone in the military uh, and, and invaded the, the prison sentence for all I know of it. Um, so, but I, I just don't have a background for that. So I was truly just relying on the Holy Spirit to, to fill me with, Give me the words that I need to, to, to be able to pray for this. And 
out of that hour and a half, I probably prayed for two minutes. During that two minutes, either my daughter or my wife, I don't know which one, and my wife doesn't remember doing it, and I haven't asked about it, but anyway, somebody came down the steps, went into the back room, grabbed something, and went back out. And that wasn't an interruption, but it was just like, and I tried to, I was trying to explain it, my thoughts to my wife about it, and I'm still trying to figure it out, is um, I took it as, well, the devil is trying to keep me from, you know, that, that evil part of the realm, spiritual realm, in, in, in this battle that's going on, is trying to keep me, distract me from being in the Holy Spirit by hearing the footsteps and the, the little bit of rustling, you know, again, it wasn't really a much of an interruption. But then my wife turned around as we were talking about it, and she said, maybe that was the Holy Spirit telling you, you've already been on this call longer than you were supposed to be, and, and you're getting uh, some of the last precious time that our daughter will be home. Uh, and she's not, you know, she's home for the summer before she starts her nursing job, uh, studying for her exam and things like that. So, you know, I and I've missed, uh, I missed her. Uh, well, I missed her that whole day because of that. So if that was her, I missed her. And maybe she was coming down just to say goodbye to me as dad. Because we'd had a really rough day the day before. Uh, and um, that's another story for another time. But um, yeah, that, I don't even remember what the question was here. But <laughs> um, what it means to have the eyes of your heart, of your heart enlightened. Um, that was an enlightening experience with my with my wife, just trying to talk through it and have us see her perspective of what might have happened versus my perspective of what was happening at the time. All right, so so I got one for you on that then. Um, right. So in Matthew in Matthew chapter six verses nineteen through twenty one says, "Do not lay up." For yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and their thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart is also and we're talking about the eyes of our heart um, some people kind of equate that to your soul which is your mind your will and your emotions and so i think opening the eyes to our heart is um what we refer to as spiritual alignment, allowing the spirit of God that lives in us to be connected to God. And then for us to be in the flesh, working towards uh, being in unison with that spirit, um, because that's where, that's where we start button heads is when our inner spirit starts dealing with our flesh. Uh, that's where we get into these spiritual battles. And yep. so, I think it's all about having the wisdom and knowledge and revelation that deep down in you, the eyes of your heart, where you lay your treasures up, that's where your heart is. And if you lay your treasures up on praising God and his majesty, then, then that's where your heart's going to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that call of God takes us back um, to the very beginning of our Christian lives is in Romans 8, uh, verse 30. Anybody wants to, I think this is, uh, is it the, those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Think about what it is to be called by God and why this why is this a source of hope for us? Jesus called out to the disciples, right? He called them, follow me. He didn't tell them why. He just said, follow me. And, and I think God calls each of us to use our gifts in certain ways and calls us uh, to a vocation uh, and he also calls us to our discipleship journey. So why why is this a source of hope for us? 
role because as I think I've said a lot of times here, I certainly say it a lot, God does not call the equipped. He equips the call. The answer. So if you called, uh, you know, then Moses wasn't ready. Right? Mm -hmm. But he put the people around him and he gave him you know, the words to say uh, when he needed to say them to so Pharaoh. Um, you know, what about you guys? What does it mean to be called by God and why is this a source of hope for us? I don't think I answered that. Some people would say being called by God means being put in uncomfortable situations that you know you're supposed to be, but you don't want to, but you do them anyway. <laughs> yep. Amen. <laughs> just like just like get out of the boat. You know, why Why is Tom Kirby not with us? Because yeah. Jonathan and some of the others of you probably kept pushing him in to his com out of his comfort zone and, and, and out of the boat. So now he's ministering in, in other ways at this time, yes. right? I think, in, on Saturday morning. So uh, it's all goodness, right? That's just, that's what we, that's what we want each other to do is to spread the love of God to others. Um, so, anyway. so God's inheritance points uh, to the end of our lives, to the final inheritance in which the Holy Spirit is the guarantee, as in verse 14 of this, of this chapter. Based on what you know from the New Testament, describe the glorious inheritance. What does that inheritance look like to you at the end of your life? I think, as Brother Tim said, that's, um, I think it was Tim, uh, or maybe Rick, that it was tailored. It's tailored for us, right? Um, my inheritance may look different than yours, or I'm sure it probably will. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is what is it we need in our heart to fully understand and to be able to praise God? Because uh, for me, it's and I know for my wife, it's like there's going to be no more pain, right? And I know for a lot of other mm -hmm. brothers on here, you know, we wake up, got these aches and pains and things that go on in my life. There, there'll be no more of that. Um, so, so that's part of it. Um, there, there's going to be this feeling of love surrounding us that, that we can't even imagine right now. Um, we've experienced some of it on this earthly plane of, of what love can be, but we really have no idea what it's going to be like there. And just mm -hmm. to see all his glorious creations and, and, and not even the creations, the thing, just his majesty right? Um, because it encompasses all of the creations. It, it is, it, it all came from him. So it's all in him. And when we see him, it's like, um, wow, how can we even think about explaining that? Anybody else want to describe what you feel your glorious inheritance feels like? It's what that experience will be like. Whatever you mentioned. It'll be you know, to uh, me the question's asking is what does heaven look like? I mean, what does heaven feel like? Right? It'll be, you know, I was um wondered what it would be like to feel like one of the disciples walking in Jesus' presence physically and so that's one of the things that i'm looking forward to in that inheritance mm -hmm. like well, i know we say to... i know Sorry, we say this is everything we need but to some extent i always wonder man if i if i had been there i'd really get it but you know then the disciples didn't get it so much of the time so what makes me think i would but still, yeah. I think it'd be different. 
you know, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I see this cars in his hands. And, you know, so, yeah. So he came and showed him. Yeah. <laughs> And now that you've seen, and do you believe? You know, still, do you believe? And then uh, so much greater those that don't see physically for themselves. But mm. So if we go back to verses 19 through 22, and I'll read those, and his incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him head over everything for the church. Slightly different version than Carl, but still the same Holy Spirit, same all uh, uh, everything is everything God's word is just is the same. But I don't know. Uh, I don't so I don't mean to to read it differently than you did, Carl, because I appreciate you reading it. Um I just that's the version that happens to be up on my on my uh, Bible mm -hmm. app. So describe God's incomparably great power according to these Verses. Well, we just read it. So um, I'll go on. Why is the resurrection and ascension such a vivid demonstration of divine power? Well, to your first one, I think um, omnipotent is, is basically the word that we use for, for his, you know, far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come, you know, um, his, his, his omniscience and omnipotence, um, all of those words that we use, because we, we don't have any other words to describe them, you know, um, yeah. and I'm sorry, the second part of your question, I just lost, I had a whole brain, what was it? Why is the resurre resurrection and ascension such oh. a vivid demonstration of divine power? Raising something from the dead? Come on. <laughs> Has anyone ever, anyone else ever raised someone from the dead? Or even claimed to? Not to, to me, it's not a, not except the comics and superhero comics. You know, can that ha does that happen? Really? That's just a creation of someone's mind. And probably this same scenario of raising Christ from the dead. I, I do a lot of, with plants here in my backyard. It's not like I'm a gardener or anything like that. I just have some plants that I really like to to mess with and. Um, Sometimes, you know, it's so hot here in the summer, you get one and it looks like it's dead, you know, and I'm like, I'm really going to try this. I'm really going to try this. So, I, you know, I take a, a piece of it and I repot it and I take care of it and I nurture it. And then, you know, three or four months later, there'll be one like little green piece on it. And just the feeling that I get from knowing that there's still life in there it gives me a it gives me something to, to look at in the fact that he took us from the ground and just just made us you know um how magnificent how wonderful how creative and powerful it's amazing So what do you think it would look like if we saw that kind of power at work in the church today? Man. What about homelessness? 
oh yeah we we'd be able to take care of that stuff because people would care about each other the church doors might even open during the week yeah. for those people except I mean, we have cold weather shelter in the winter time but you know as you said it gets hot around so like people die in baltimore um, of heat mm -hmm. frustration or whatever it's called all all the time because they can't afford an air conditioner our churches are sitting empty the air conditioner is keeping it at a certain temperature they're very livable uh, that's something that's always hurt my mind uh, if the church uh if all the churches just fed people um you know i think a lot of our churches maybe do clothes drives and food banks and things like that and and, and that's goodness right but there's just so much more of god's divine power that the church could exert right yeah i agree with you our church has a um, another aspect to it it's called city link and it's a very large food and clothing type warehouse um that we do uh feed and clothe a lot of the homeless uh in in the area uh, but i agree with you you know the church itself there's a huge beautiful ground of church there with several buildings that the temperatures are maintained at constant you know 72 74 degrees and but for the excuse me but for the most part they're shut up during the week yeah just think about you know if we as the priesthood of all believers believed that we could heal you think god would in his divine power could use us and maybe you know maybe that might be just having more doctors and nurses which is enough huge shortage of right now most a lot of that due to covid and the stresses that that put on them but if we could just believe that we could heal just like carl believes that he can heal the plant we're given the power and the authority by jesus as his disciples that in his power in his will we can do these things um are you saying we need to open the doors to our churches in here? <laughs> <laughs> I've been praying that I've been praying that for a long time. I've been wondering. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I don't get into the politics. I saw some of the politics of, of the of the our uh, New York Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church this past weekend, and I was pleasantly blessed by that particular bishop and how much patience he had. And I think I talked to you guys about what I saw on Friday night uh, last week. I saw a lot more of it on all day Saturday as they had to deal with churches that wanted to leave the United Methodist Church and, and, and how he reacted even after the votes were that, yeah, they, they, they've done all the, all the, the, the church legal steps. Uh, they filled all the boxes. Um, and we feel like they have a good, um, they're following the Holy Spirit in their heart, so they should leave. You got to go? Okay. Blessings. Um, so, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of things that I think that the divine power of God could, could do in our lives and in therefore in the church since the church is us right um today so uh the thrust of paul's prayer is that his readers may have a thorough knowledge of god's call inheritance and power especially the latter but how do christians grow in understanding some will, will reply that knowledge depends on the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. And they are right, at least in part. For Paul prays that the spirit of wisdom and revelation may increase their knowledge of God and enlighten 
the eyes of their hearts. We have no liberty to infer from this, however, that our responsibility is solely to pray and to wait for illumination, and not at all to think. Others may make the opposite mistake. They use their minds and think, but leave little room for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul brings the two together. First, he prays that the eyes of the reader's hearts may be enlightened to know God's power. Then he teaches that God has already supplied historical evidence of his power by raising and exalting Jesus. It is precisely as we use our minds to ponder what God has done in Christ that the Spirit will open our eyes to grasp its implications. So for application this next week, um, think about these things. Uh, and do what God asks you to do, obey what the Spirit leads you to. In what ways would you like to know God better? What difference, and secondly, what difference would it make in your life if your eyes were more opened to the hope of God's call? The church is central to God's plan as it says in verses 22 and 23, well, what role does the church play in your life? I hope and pray that, you, that all of us are very engaged in our church, that we have that divine uh, knowledge in the eyes of our hearts and, and that uh, we're doing all we can. So I'm not exhorting you guys like he's exhorting these Ephesians, but um, we're just encouraging. I encourage us to uh, to do the best we can, follow God's call, and to have the hope that he's going to give us the strength to do that, but also to encourage others, because I think encouraging others around us is, is a huge part of, of God's call. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, um, let's pray the content of this prayer, maybe from your own words, um, for your church, yourself, and one other Christian friend. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And um, uh, Carl, if you would close us out today, we appreciate it. Yes. Our Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we've had to read and ponder your word, Lord. We thank you for the examples that we are given here. Father, this prayer of intercession for others, we take focus off of ourselves and put it on others. And, and that's the way we grow. Lord, that's the way we can grow and help others grow. And Father, we... We do pray for wisdom and knowledge and revelation that will help us in our life, Father, and, and help us to be more useful to those around us, to be good disciples, to proclaim your name, to not be afraid, to not be hesitant to speak the words that you want us to to people, to let them to know you. Help us to preach the gospel, Lord, in the way we live. Um, we don't all have to be a Ray Comfort that goes out on the sidewalk and, and does street evangelism, Lord, but our, our daily lives, our daily lives can be a huge influence on people. Father, I just pray for each and every one of the men here and for those that will watch later, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will flow through them. Father, that, that we can lift these prayers up of Paul, that we can understand the magnitude and the majesty of who you are and what you are and where we should lay our treasures up. Father, help us not to be blindsided by this world and 
think that the things that are here will help us in any way um, once we leave. Father, we, we look forward to the day that we can stand in your presence. And we thank you for the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit with us here on this earth so that we can feel a part of you here with us each and every day. Lord, I pray that you go with, with all of us as we go out this week, that we can be those disciples you want us to be. Help protect us from this world, Lord. And I say this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 I apologize. I'd like to add uh, just uh, the, the great commandment. Uh, in Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always at the very end of the age. Praise God. And mm -hmm. let's go and be the church. Love you, brothers. Have a great week. Go is go wherever you God takes you this week. Yeah, that's what it means. Thank you. God bless uh, guys. Father's Day to everybody. Yes, Thank happy you. Father's Day. Thank you. No apologies. Yeah. Happy yes. Father's Day to everybody. Amen. And have God a bless. great week. Me too, brother. Oh. Yes.